So what I'm going to talk about is visual effects. Uh, the Hollywood film industry has been radically changed by visual effects uh, in the last 20 years or so. Partly because uh, it's all done on computers, it's all done with computer graphics. Computers are much cheaper and much faster than they used to be. Uh, but also because the artists are much better at this. And we're going to look at some technologies that go into this. So in addition to all the hardware, there's a lot of software that has to be built for this. And over the years, it's gotten very much better and very much cheaper. But what, all, what you also get from this is it, at some of the large facilities, uh, they actually maintain a, a staff of people who do research in, in this and who find various ways of creating better and better software. One of the areas that, that has been very fruitful lately uh, is in the area of uh, applying physical uh, physics and mathematics uh, and simulation uh, to computer graphics problems. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, an area called computational fluid dynamics. Uh, computational fluid dynamics is essentially taking the equations of motion of fluids and things like that and putting them on a computer and trying to simulate the actual motion of materials. That's a subject that has been around for, well the computer part has been around just for a few decades, but the fluid dynamics has been around for centuries. And so it's fairly well understood in terms of, of the physical content. The, the numerical content is uh, very difficult to do. There have been several generations of scientists and engineers who have worked on putting, putting things on computers and simulating them. And uh, that's, that has turned out to be uh, very, very difficult. And we're not trying to reinvent or improve upon that, improve the science, we're trying to exploit it. So when we have artistic problems, um, we're not necessarily uh, worried about simulating the absolute reality of nature. What we frequently find is that, is that absolute reality is not important. And the reason why is because the reality we're actually going for is the one that is in the mind of the director. Um, <laughs> the director may or may not have the same reality in mind that, that we do all the time. And so there's a lot of creative process that goes on figuring this out. So, the computational fluid dynamics, um, this is, is two simulations that I'm using just as a start uh, on, on the examples of how this works. There are lots of different ways of, of taking the basic physics and turn it into, um, into a simulation on a computer. And the different ways produce very different results. Uh, so the simulation on the bottom, this is, they're both the same simulation uh, scenario, they're both a white gas that's stirred up by a paddle. The simulation scenario on the bottom was, was coded up and run in a simulation technique that is particularly simple to understand. It's fairly simple to write the code for it, and, so, and you can get it going. In addition, an artist can really beat it up. They can take that paddle, and they can have it running all over the place and doing all kinds of crazy things, and the simulation will just keep on going. Um, so it's simple to, simple to write, simple to use, uh, really, really robust, but it looks like the gas is in molasses or something. The simulation on the top is uh, quite a bit more difficult to build in terms of computer code. Uh, you ha really have to understand some of the science behind it. Uh, it takes much longer to write. It's very sensitive to, uh, to errors and to extra things. If an artist takes that and starts stirring it up all over the place, uh, then uh, it will quickly explode. It will turn into just absolute garbage. So these are two different methods. But, you know, a scientist might look at it and say the top one is the one he wants because it's the most realistic, uh, and so that's what I'm going to take. But in fact, in, in computer graphics and in making films, both of those techniques are equally valid and equally useful as, as a tool. The artists essentially use the computer screen uh, as their medium. So they don't, they don't use a canvas, they don't uh, do, do pottery, they may do it uh, on their spare time, but not for this purpose. So they have a computer screen that is their canvas. And so in a sense, these kinds of tools are like brushes that they use to, to create the, uh, whatever they're doing on the screen. Fluid dynamics also has a big problem uh, in production that the simulation on the left doesn't look very good. The one on the right looks a little better. When you simulate fluid dynamics, you have to do it by simulating on a finite collection of points in space. So you've only got so many points you can do, and if you do more and more points, you need bigger computers, more time, and so there's a limit to how much you can get visually. So if we take a fairly small set of points, you get something like the one on the left that doesn't look all that great. 
But what we have found over time is that if you break down the fluid dynamics problem into, into uh, the individual physical processes that are going on, there are actually processes that don't require you to limit it to just a few points. You can, in fact, do it in an infinite number of points and do it very fast and very efficient, and uh, it doesn't have the limitations that the rest of the algorithm does. And when you just take those and just apply those, not on, on the grid or not on a set of points, but apply it everywhere, then you get a much better look to it. You get the, the one on, on the right. So the, one on the, the, the simulations are identical to each other, except that the one on the right had this other technique involved where you didn't have to keep things confined to points. This means you can do very much more complex things. Or you can do fairly mund mundane things. So this is a shot from the first Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. And uh, the chipmunks are dancing on a kettle that has dry ice coming out of it. And the dry ice is, was, was computer simulated. You can see on the top, the cloud coming down is the output of the simulation. And you can see artifacts in it. Something doesn't look quite right. And it's the grid artifacts from having a finite simulation. So that, although it's subtle, is enough that, uh, that it is unacceptable for a client, uh, even for a, a talking chipmunk movie. <laughs> Um, but by using this, this technique of breaking down the science and figuring out which parts can be done without being on a grid, we can produce the one that's on the bottom, and the artifacts are gone, it looks much nicer, and we got through the movie. This is an example from uh, the Golden Compass. In the Golden Compass, there are animals uh, that are connected to each person, and those animals are some sort of external representation of that person's soul. So the animals talk, and when the person dies, the animal has to turn into some sort of dust and float away. So the, the task was, not only are the animals computer graphics, but we have to figure out what does this dust look like? How does it move? In addition, you, know, you want the dust to tell the story a little bit. So in some cases, for the bad guys, the dust had to move away, kind of menacing and good riddance. For the good guys, the dust had to be a little sad. So. There aren't equations, there aren't in the equations of motion, there are no terms for sadness or revenge or anything like that. So you have to work out all the different pieces for it. So the, the solution was about a year-long design effort in which an artist took our fluid dynamic equations and worked out all different ways of expressing this motion to try to get a, an emotion to the motion. Uh, and so the effect is that we, we do many different layers the artist chose to do lots of different layers, lots of different effects, and then combine all of them uh, at the end into one big production. So we can do this not only because we can exploit and abuse uh, physics and mathematics, but also because we have excellent artists who are willing to try out and experiment with these new things. So thanks very much.